Hey guys, it is November the 18th, 18, that's my favorite number, November 18th is going to be a really good day, I am whispering because I am out hunting, and uh, it's a prime day for the whitetail rut, so I'm hoping to get a big buck today, it's almost 8 o'clock, sun is about to rise, I'll show you what I'm looking at, isn't that pretty? Notice I've got two guns here today. My trusty 270 for big bucks and my Benelli shotgun for grizzly bears that try to hurt me while I am hunting for big butts. <laughs> Did I say hunting for big butts? No, I'm not hunting for big butts. I'm hunting for big bucks. But yesterday, uh, when I was out here, I saw this massive uh, grizzly tracks all over the place and so I was a little jittery about coming out in the dark this morning and so I'm not going anywhere without my shotgun so uh, just a little reminder to those of you who want to take the land sometimes there's giants and you got to be ready well I am going to do a hunt I've been out here for a couple days I was actually overlooking this big field over here and uh, I kind of thought that I'd wait until something came out in the field, but I found that stuff wasn't coming out in the field, uh, it, which it does happen sometimes. I, I shot a, a, a deer in this field not long ago, and actually I saw five big moose out in this deer, out in the same field uh, a couple weeks ago when I was here with my son. I didn't have a moose tag, or I would have got a nice bull moose, but... Uh, Anyways, I kind of was sitting watching the open, and for the last couple of days, nothing's come in the open, and so uh, I noticed that there's this small corridor between the trees here, if you look to the center of the screen, and uh, every once in a while, the deer will go from this patch of trees, and they'll want to get to this patch of trees, but to do it, they have to go through that small little opening. And uh, I'm thinking that's probably my best place to catch a big buck. And uh, as I was sitting here thinking about that, it you know, got me thinking about our own lives spiritually and how the enemy, you know, he watches us in those little areas that might be unguarded. Uh, the hunter, you know, maybe we'll call this one the hunter because each one of us is really being hunted and uh, many of us are smart enough that we don't come into big wide open fields uh, we don't maybe uh, do the big ugly obvious sins but I want you to know that there is an enemy assigned to destroy you Satan has come to kill steal and destroy you and you didn't need to know just like a hunter sitting in a tree stand uh, the enemy is watching certain areas of your life hoping that he can catch you for some it might be gossip it's, that's just that one area that you just you're just kind of that unguarded area that you just kind of wander into every once in a while someone else it might be alcoholism someone else it might be sexual uh, immorality pretty much every guy and honestly probably half the women too struggle with sexual immorality pornography things like that uh, these are not small things. These are areas where the enemy sits waiting to destroy us. And, you know, you can be guarding yourself in every other area of your life. But if you walk out into an opening every little once in a while, you just kind of give yourself permission to go out into a clearing, uh, uh, into an unguarded area. You need to know that is where Satan is waiting and he wants to destroy you. And many people have lived wonderful lives and loved the Lord well. But yet, um, because of a little bit of compromise, their whole destiny was destroyed. And so you really want to guard yourself and uh, guard your life and make sure that there's no, uh, no area of your life where you just kind of wander out into the open. You stay in safe places with Jesus. So anyways, there's your uh, word for the day. And... Uh, if I get myself a buck, I'll uh, show you that too.
Hey guys, I am now home. I have cleaned up and uh, I'm still whispering because now I've got my kids in bed and I don't want to wake them up. But uh, I did actually, well, I didn't come home with any meat, but uh, I did have actually a pretty decent size uh, buck came out, uh, eight point, a four by four. But uh, I decided to wait. I'm hoping for a bigger one. I really want to get a big one that I can put up on my fireplace over there. And so uh, I let him go. But you know, it was interesting. Even that was a bit of a sermon in and of itself. You know, I, I mean, this buck and, and a doe and two, uh, two babies come walking right past me, 20 yards away. I mean, I could have shot every one of them uh, 20 yards away. But I decided to let him go. And the reason I decided to let him go now was not because I'm a nice guy. No, it was because I wanted to let him get bigger. And, you know, I think that's the truth for many Christians as well. Uh, I hate to keep uh, uh, comparing myself to the devil here. But in so, so many ways, the enemy is like that. Sometimes there's an area of your life that you have, uh, you're walking out in the open. You're, you have an unguarded area of your life where the enemy could destroy you, but he chooses not to. Why? Because for many, he's waiting for a more opportune time when he cannot just destroy you, but take a whole bunch of people down with you. We see that all the time in ministry. He'll, he'll you know, some preacher will have uh, compromise in his life and the enemy will just let him go. He, he won't even try to expose him. He waits until he gets more influence. He waits until he's leading a larger number of people. He waits until there's thousands of people looking at him and then the enemy pulls back the curtain and lets everyone see what the guy's really made of. Listen to me. Just because you're getting away with sin in your life does not mean it's okay. It could be that the enemy's just waiting to destroy you at a more opportune time. I'm going to tell you something. We have got to take sin seriously in our lives. And I would encourage you, don't let, you know, just like, remember Jesus said in John 14, 30, he said, here comes the devil, but don't worry. He has nothing in me. That's Steve's uh, translation. I think he actually says the, the, the ruler of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me. Can you say that? That the devil doesn't got anything in me. That's the way God wants us to live our lives. And so, so search your heart today. And if there's any unguarded area, anything that you need to repent of, just take a moment and just talk to the Lord. Repent. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for grace. Ask him for strength. And choose to sign up for total obedience again today. Well, there's your word for the day, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully I'll do another one where I'll show you a big buck, but uh, we let that one go today, so uh, I'll get it back out there soon. By the way, if you like this stuff, make sure you sign up for our, 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 our email list. Just send me an email to feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com, and I'll make sure you get all the videos. God bless you. We'll see you soon.